Good and praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, today is the first Sunday in April, and we're delighted and pre uh, pleasured to uh, share with you on this morning. And I have my grandson here, and um, the Lord has given us a word uh, concerning um, the drawing power of Jesus Christ. And um, I was intrigued because this week he had a uh, science project that he was doing. And science have always been one of my favorite subjects and um, really one of those that's very easy for me to comprehend. And the next one was English. I, those two I really didn't have to study hard for. The Lord really um, kind of gifted me in those areas. So I was very excited about the uh, science um, experiment that he had at school. So what was your science experiment? Um, I learned about that metal things connect to metal things, it sticks together. And so what did you use to prove it? Magnet. All right. So this is my coffee cup, and it's made of metal. Does the magnet stick to it? Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. Perfect. The magnet sticks to it. The metal was attracted to the metal that has components in it that draws other sources of metal to it. All right, take it off. I have a pair of scissors here that have two different materials. The top part is made of plastic. Now, does it stick to plastic? Let's see. All right, the bottom part is metal. Does it stick to it? Mm -hmm. It is attracted to it. Good. Now we have uh, one more set of items. These are safety pins. And we got a few there. So let's see, does the magnet pick up any? It picks up several. It picks up several. Let's try it again. Put it down. Let's try it again. Let's see how many we can get. All right, we got a nice little group. All right, so now when you had your magnet in your um, experiment, what did you, how many did you pick up? Um, I picked up nine when I was doing that short one. How many? Nine. All right. And then you picked up more with? Four. So then I drop it and then pick up 61. It picked up 61. It picked up a multitude of uh, metal uh, pieces. So... Um, what is uh, the definition of a magnet? You want to read it? Mm -hmm. Well, I want you to read it. Okay. Magnet. A personal thing that has powerful attraction. Uh-huh. It's a person or thing that has powerful attraction. All right. And so today, um, we're going to talk about the drawing power of Jesus Christ. And he's going to read our scripture, and then he's going to dart out because he's fidgety. All right? Uh, read our scripture for today. John 12, 32. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. This is the word of God. And what the preacher say after the word of God. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, he's going to dart out and we're going to continue mm -hmm. just briefly uh, with our scripture. And it's, been, it's imperative to me that everyone gets to know who Jesus Christ is and that he is uh, the only way, our only source uh, of comfort and healing and salvation and our way to uh, get into the presence of the Lord. And we... Uh, going to continue on. The Savior wants us to come close to him. He wants us to experience him. Uh, he wants us to experience him for ourselves and give him our heart to make him Lord of our life. Make him Lord of our life and change our life. He will change your life for the better and it will be so changed until it will be noticeable uh, to the world. It'll be noticeable, especially to people who know you and who have experienced you and love you and uh, 
pay attention, know your personality, know uh, you as an individual. The, the, the change will be so noticeable until they'll want to know what the change is. And when an individual is so uh, pleased at a wonderful uh, event or thing that has happened in their life, they are willing to tell anybody, willing to tell uh, somebody, everybody about the change that have come over their life. And it is Jesus Christ. And uh, what drew you to Christ and um, how you live now. This is what the Lord wants of us. And it's a pleasure in knowing him. Uh, me personally, my personal testimony is this. Uh, I yet had a choice, but I grew up in a home where my parents were ministers. And we grew up in the fear and admiration of Jesus Christ. But it wasn't until I knew for myself that I wanted to experience Christ for myself. And it wasn't long after I experienced Christ, I was sold out to the cause of Christ and really wanted everybody that I knew to know this Jesus, the Christ of God. And the more that I read the word of God, and Jesus is the living word, the more that I read about God and learned about him and um, upped my walk with him, I realized that the presence of the Lord was more in my life and he was close to me because I drew close to him. The drawing power of God. And I'm just going to read a few scriptures, pray, and then we're going to enjoy our day, continually uh, living a lifestyle of worship, praising and honoring him. Um, so the drawing power. Uh, John James, the eight, uh, fourth chapter and eighth verse, New Living Translation says, Come close to God and God will come close to you. Psalms 145 and 18 says, The Lord is close to all who call on him in truth. He's close to everybody who will call on him. He hears you. He will listen to you. He understands everything you're going through and he pays attention to the things that you want to get to and go to. Hebrews, the 10th chapter and the 22nd verse says, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. We can go completely and clean, clean with clean hands in the presence of God because we went to him, came close to him, and we fully trusted him to cleanse our hearts. Now Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse says, so let us come boldly. Uh -huh. Don't be shy. Come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we'll receive his mercy and we'll find grace to help us when we need it most. If you come boldly, don't be trying to hide anything because God knows everything. He knows you. He knows everything about you. He made you. He knows every hair on your head. You might as well come boldly to the throne of God. And when you need grace, he got it. He has it there for you. He has grace there for you. So be bold about it. Just come to him. He knows anyway, and this is what he wants. He wants that relationship with you. Hebrew, the seventh chapter, the 25th verse says, Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Uh-huh. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save us and come. We go, if we go to him, uh, Christ is forever interceding on our behalf. Forever. Always looking out, praying for us, uh, going to the Father on our behalf. He's always in the presence of God the Father and will go before God 
on my behalf. I'm telling you, I'm so uh, uh, at awe about the mercy and the, the uh, attentiveness of Christ towards us because we give our lives to him. He gave his life and he was not guilty of anything. We were guilty of everything we committed and Christ gave his life for us. Psalm 73 verse 28 says, but as for me, how good it is to be near God. For me, it's a good thing to be near God. I've made the sovereign Lord my shelter and I will tell everyone of his wonderful, the wonderful things that he does. I'm going to tell everybody. I'll tell everybody because God is good when we come near to him and I've made him my shelter. I've made him my shelter. He's my go-to. He is my go-to. I mean, it's wonderful to be able to go to him and know that he lives inside of you all at the same time. Isn't that wonderful? That is a wonderful thing. So, my brothers and sisters, I just want to let you know that God is sovereign in all his ways, uh, for he is the sovereign God, the sovereign God Almighty. His decisions are sovereign. And through Christ Jesus, we can receive every benefit God has for us. It's on purpose. God declared it so in the beginning when he created us. And we get it through Christ Jesus, the magnetic force. Christ is the magnetic force. It is Jesus that attracts. It's Jesus that captivates. It's Jesus that draws us with his love. He is the attractive source. God loved us so that he gave his only begotten son to sacrifice his life for my sinful one. Sacrificing my sinful one. We guilty. He wasn't. He gave his everything, which was his life on Calvary's Christ, on Calvary's cross. All we have to do is to come close to God and Jesus is the drawing source, the drawing source. And the scripture of the day says this, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, Jesus said, I'll do the drawing. I will do the drawing. I was attracted to Christ and just like that magnet. And I remember um, uh, the same experiment when I was in school myself. And we had several magnets, powerful magnets around the house. And when we picked up uh, paper clips, uh, we, could, we could pick up one and then uh, let that magnet, magnetic uh, paper clip clip up, pick up some. And before you know, we had strings and strings and long lines of paper clips and bunches. That one magnet drew in all of those paper clips. The Lord Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, I'll do the drawing. My personal testimony, I made Jesus my choice. I received him in my heart and learned who he was, learned about what he can do, made him head, honored God through Christ Jesus, for it was God who created me. He created me to bring him glory and honor. And through Christ Jesus, I've made up in my mind, I've purposed in my mind that I don't want to see not one soul lost. So if I can be a magnetic force to live so that God, the beauty of holiness, can, uh, uh, can show through my life and someone be attracted to Jesus through what I'm exhibiting through my lifestyle, then I'm lifting up Jesus Christ. It's Jesus who's doing the drawing. He drew me and that magnetic force is within me. And just imagine this. If all of us who lift up the name of Jesus and live and bring honor and glory to God, then as my former 
pastor, the late Bishop Rance Allen used to say, God gets the glory and he gives us the afterglow, the attractive light, the light that draws men and would uh, bring them to a point where they would say, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to have this joy? What must I do to have this peace? What must I do to have this comfort? How do I receive his healing? How do I receive the benefits of heaven in my life? Lift up the name of Jesus because you know him for yourself and Jesus Christ will draw all men unto him. Jesus, the drawing power. He's the one that is the attraction of the hour. So if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as the head of your life, and you have not made him Lord of your life, what are you waiting for? Uh, I'm telling you, he's sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. Oh my God, when things are not right, he is my all writer. Mm -hmm. And when I'm laboring through worry, if I should labor through the night, he is my all nighter. He's there with me, making me realize, go to sleep, girl. I got this. Yesterday, he was in my today. Today, he in my tomorrow. What do I have to worry about? Come close to God and he'll come close to you. The drawing power of Jesus Christ. So if you don't know him, get to know him. Just realize, say this prayer, Lord, I know that I'm not right. I know that I'm not right. And Father God, I know you sent your son Jesus Christ to die for me. And I realize that his suffering, bleeding and dying on Calvary, getting up, being raised from the dead, now have ascended into heaven and sitting on the right hand of God and is interceding for me. I believe all of that. Save me, Lord. If you pray that prayer, Jesus Christ have come into your heart. Get to know him more through his word. Jesus is the living word. John, St. John chapter 1 verse 14 says that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word moved into the neighborhood. The word will move into your house. The word of God is Jesus Christ. He is the living word. Get to know him through his word. Find somewhere to worship, to come together with other believers and fellowship. Build a, a, a relationship in a community with God, but your personal relationship with God is the most important thing. And you got to have him because time is up. The Lord is returning. He is soon to come. He's on his way. Get it together. Stay together. Get right. Stay right. Uh, be ready so you don't have to get ready. All right. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this time of sharing. We thank you, Lord God, for being a sovereign God. We thank you, Lord, for being a, a, a almighty God, an omnipresent God. You're everywhere at the same time, a healing God. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came to help us, to save us, to deliver us from our sins. Now, Lord, we ask you, oh God, to be with us, go with us, Stay with us. Anything, Lord, that is not like you, take it out, oh God. And help us, oh God, to increase our faith and walk closer to you in Jesus' name. And we pray, God, that everyone on the sound of my voice who will hear these words and realize that this is the word of God will take at least one scripture, apply it to their life and get to know you better. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And God, we pray for those everyone, that they have a blessed week all week. Whatever they have need of, we have need of, we know you, God, to be a provider. This is what we ask in the name of Jesus. We love you. We praise you. We adore you. We bless you forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Listen, you have a wonderful day. Continue to live a life uh, pleasing to God. Worship him because he's on your side always. Have a wonderful day. We love you. And until next time, remember, Christ is the drawing power.